Welcome back to the channel. Today uh, we're going to do a bit of batch painting and finish off these British infantry. So if you haven't seen this, um, I would ch definitely recommend checking out part one or part one and two, depending on how I, I cut it up. This is the end result of our uh, basically base coating the British infantry or layering out, uh, blocking out the colors for British infantry of the Napoleonic period. And um, that's the one we did on the show or uh, might have been the one we did. But um, I've got five, quite a few of these. I've got heaps and heaps of starter boxes. I bought them and they were like 70% off, 75% off. I think I got three. So I've got plenty of these to do. Uh, and I've based almost all of them up like this for for sort of large scale Napoleonics, but they can also be used for sharp practice. And I figured I need some skirmish figures, so when one of these guys gets killed, you can pop down three of these instead, or if two get killed, pop down two. That's you know, as casualty re replacements. So we're going to take the oh, there's also a quote unquote character, which is a um, a uh, corporal. For the um, for the one of the center companies, um, which is cool. Um, normally in skirmish games, you use a lot of uh, um, flank companies and that sort of thing. So it's um, the only NCOs I have seem to be for the center companies, which is cool. So I finally get to use this guy. Anyway, um, and I tend not to put I don't like to put NCOs in in big units like this. Even I, I yeah even putting officers in big units like this. Yeah, I like only one flag. I don't like too many officers. It should be mostly infantry, mostly men. Anyway, we're going to take this to this, and let's have a look at how we do it. So please excuse any clicking or any of that you hear. Um, I'm pretty chill when I paint, so I like to change my music. And I'm AFK woodcutting on old school RuneScape right now. So um, yeah, that's that's what I like to do when I paint. Um, I don't tend to sit down like it's super ultra focused on something I always like to be doing a couple of things at once and you know AFK woodcutting on RuneScape is probably one of the most boring things I can think of doing on that game so it's, it's perfect for things like this so to start off with um what paint is this um army paint of pure red obviously don't use that massive blob that I had on there just go along and I've said it before and I'll say it again it's not an art it's a science. Oh, sorry, not it's, it's not a science. It's an art of uh, getting this these sort of sleeves done properly. It's almost like just pick out the raised areas. And, um, it seems very thick tonight. For some reason, I'm not sure why that is. Hopefully, I've got it in focus. So yes. Uh, less of a less of a science and more of just sort of pick out the areas that seem the most raised. Um, anyway, so I'll go on and do this one, and then we'll show you how I like to keep myself motivated while mass painting miniatures. So that's as much as I'm comfortable doing with this brush. Um, if I move over to a very slow, a small brush, but as you can see, it's basically just find all the raised areas. I'm really losing the focus point on this thing. It's it's driving me nuts. Anyway, find the raised areas, find the um, the the sort of stick out bits. So uh, miss a slight one there. One of the issues with painting Napoleonic troops is you want the jackets to be bright, but you have to pick, um, say if you want it to go as bright as possible, for the men you have to pick the second brightest color you have, because of course the officers um, coats would be even brighter than the men's. So it's um, it's one of those things you have to keep in mind. So um, yes, uh, you can see there, have I got an officer behind me? So there's an officer there and there's a man there. And you can see that I really need to go back and 
Oh, no, you can't. Yeah, you can. I really need to go back and, and just hit this with a little bit brighter uh, red because that should be much, much brighter than it is there. So what I'm going to do is go through and do all of these. Um, the same thing. So basically the two arms and the, the tail coat where it's visible, the tail section where it's visible. Um, if I can even show you guys, which is there. And just to finish it off, the last thing I'm going to do is get a tiny blob of red and just go around the base of the Shaco plume here. I'm not too worried about going over the top. That's not an issue for me. I just don't want to get any on the, um, the actual Shaco itself. Like that. Because, of course, for British centre companies, or the, the hat companies, as they would have been called it earlier, um, are, of course, white over red. So that's that. So I'll go through, smash out these next ones, and then I'll be right back. So I've completely did those others with the forgetting to hit record, which is fantastic. So all the all the jackets are done, and all the little details have been have been picked out. Um, important to leave a little recess around the uh, around the, the sergeant stripes. It looks a lot smaller than it does on the actual figure in real life. The the recess is much larger than it looks there. Anyway, onto white. Um, the white I'm using is matte white, and I figure what I'll do on the corporal. Sorry, corporal. What I'll do is I'll paint the corporal, turn the thing off do the rest of the unit and then come back and just show you the, the corporal as he's painted but uh, I want to get these done at the same time so I'll, I'll paint the corporal on stream on camera sorry and I'll uh, do the rest at that um, yeah just as I'm going so I can show you a full full set so what I, I'll just run through it quickly what I do is I get my minis normally about eight plus a character of some kind even someone just like a corporal just someone interesting someone different or something like a, uh, a Lewis gun for my uh, World War One slash World War Two slash interwar slash whatever um, uh, Highlanders there so uh, I like to paint a group so in this case eight for sharp practice and these guys are going to act again as, as sort of unit um, splits for these guys here uh, so I'll paint them off off camera but uh, you'll see them in the background and then when I'm done I will show you the whole lot all together because um, yeah anyway so on to the white So that's my, uh, that's the pants done. 
onto the, uh, uh, I don't want to call it webbing or equipment, but uh, onto the, the sort of leather work around here. So we're going to touch the, um, we're not going to touch anything else with this brush. Uh, what we're going to do now is hit the, the tufts, the little thing there. There is a strap there and above it there. Uh, there's a strap here, which is connected to the backpack. And there's a strap here. You won't, can't really see it. Which is the uh, the cartridge box. But uh, you can see it under there if you look quite closely. There. Uh, of course, we're going to hit the little lace work on the front. Well, not lace work, the little fabric strips. And of course, that there. Uh, this entire um, musket sling you never see used. <laughs> and uh, that's it. That's it. Of course, the other, this here is for the backpack. It's just backpack cross. Um, Warlord and Perry both have their miniatures with backpacks on. Um, I believe the Warlord plas the Perry plastics can leave them off, but uh, I like the backpacks on. But of course, yeah, in in real life, in in actual battles, you'd probably want to take those packs off. But uh, they do look nice, and they are really iconic. This sort of British black knapsack type thing. Uh, and of course it's got the, the straps here, so we'll do those in white as well. So that's all the white done so far. We've got the little bits there, the little buckles, I'll have a bit of metal on that later. All the stuff on the body. Uh, these will have uh, little, little silver buttons put on them. The strap, the, sorry, the musket sling, um, just a bit of work on that. The red there will get hit with a, with a high light, a dry brush. So I'll pop out. You can really see how dark the skin is. Um, I'm going to do the the face next. My dog's barking at a possum, sorry. Um, I'm going to do the, the skin next. A little bit of, yeah, um, there you can see my brother yeah, whistling at him. Um, green next, sorry, the, the face next, then the green, which is just the cuffs and the collars, and then uh, the water bottle. So I'll uh, get to it. And I've just realized I forgot to do the, uh, the gaiters there. So I'll do those and then on to the face, which is done, of course, in Kislev flesh. So yeah, I'm not going to paint the others. I'm just going to paint this guy. I'll paint this corporal and uh, do the others off camera because painting on camera is really annoying. So, Gizlo Flash.
Now, I'm, I, faces is something I'm really not good at. Um, but you can see the difference between the, uh, the Warlord face. Hang on, where's the, I think this is the best Warlord face that I've got. And the Perry. Um, I think the Warlord is just, it's, it's obviously bigger. And um, that little bit of extra room really gets, lets you sort of get a bit more brushwork in there and a bit more detail. I'm not bashing Perry, I love Perry. Perry is my main thing, you know. I only have these Warlord because they come in a massive kit and it was super cheap. But um, Perry is my is my go-to for, for anything. Uh, usually, usually my go-to. So, on to the, uh, the green. So, as you can see, the green is pretty much... That's pretty much been done before. The only real bit was the collar. Um, we'll just leave that darker green there for the cuff. Uh, as long as that collar trim is right, that'll, that'll frame that green there nicely. So, uh, next I'll do the backpack. So the, uh, sorry, the, the, the great coat. On side note, it's actually really hard to find British troops in great coats for the peninsula, uh, for the Napoleonic period. You, you very rarely find them. Well, you see heaps of French in them. For some reason, they don't like doing British in great coats. I imagine it's it's a rarer thing to see him, but same with the, the American Civil War. It's, it's, it's yeah, anyway. Um, although you find much more stuff in the Civil War wearing great coats, but it is, you know, so it's less common than, there's no plastic kits sort of thing. Anyway. Anyway, so I'm going to mix a bit of um, Dungeon Grey with some white, and uh, we'll hit this with a highlight. So, there we go. Dead easy. Um, nice backpack done there. Sorry, those, uh, as you can see, uh, details obviously a lot nicer on the uh, on the corporal than it is on the regular troops, but yeah, it's the same thing. So it's just a 50 50 mix. And uh, you're right. Uh, now, the blacks are all going to get a, a dry brush of white after the end of this, just to, to take the shine off it, as it were. Uh, the musket is going to get. Uh, desert yellow, but I really want to wait till that white's dry. Uh, I leave the... Oh, actually, yeah, that metal's going to have to get redone, too. That really darkened it more than I thought. Remember, this is a new wash that I'm using here. Uh, a little bit darker than the pants, too. Um, anyway. On to the... Uh, I don't even know. On to the... Uh, the water bottle, which I'm going to do with... Uh, sky something? Temple... What's it called? Temple Guard Blue or something? <laughs> 